So before we get into this video, November 14th to the 21st, mark your calendars. Also, swing on over to my Patreon. I will be going through each episode of Guillermo del Toro's Cabinets of Curiosity on Netflix. I'm gonna do full length commentaries on each episode and it's gonna be great. Up to now, I have seen every episode and I really wanna bring it to the platform to give you guys an idea of what I think about the show. And for those that don't have Netflix and wanna get familiarized with this show and maybe be familiar with Guillermo del Toro, I think it'll be a good time for you. For $7 a month, the cost of a Starbucks drink and way cheaper than a cocktail at a bar, for me, you can watch film commentaries and show commentaries up there multiple times a week. 14th to the 21st, get up on the Patreon, watch the show with me. Now there are some that I love more than others and some that I genuinely do not like. But all in all, it's an anthology. Bizarre nightmares unfold in eight tales of terror in this visually stunning, spine-tingly horror collection curated by Guillermo del Toro. Swing on over, link in the description bar below. Don't miss out on the awesomeness, and I hope to see you all there. Hey guys, what's going on? It is your girl, Allie, and I am here with some tea. Changing it up a bit. This is some lemon echinacea tea with a whole lemon in it and some honey. And I thought I'd do something that is very dear to me. Review a short film. Now, for those that do not know and are new to the channel, hi, hello, and if you've enjoyed my content thus far, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the bell so you're always notified about the new videos that I have coming out. But for those that are not familiar with me, I used to be a filmmaker. I enjoy making films. I used to make a lot of short films in the past, about seven to 10 short films. 10 short films, some of them I was actually proud of. And I do enjoy looking at what other people are doing in the realm of independent filmmaking. And I don't really talk about it much here, which is kind of sad because if there's anything that I do enjoy, it's independent films more than a big budget Hollywood film. So there's this channel on YouTube called Dust. And I've never heard of it until today when I was deciding that I wanted to review some short films that people are doing nowadays. Now, I believe Dust is this channel on YouTube that does a lot of sci-fi shorts, which I am a huge fan of sci-fi films. And I'm saying low budget, because who knows, this probably isn't low budget, because from what I saw on this page, they have their films on different streaming services, nothing like big named, you know, they're not on like a Netflix or Amazon Prime, but it's like very small, almost free streaming services. This film is called Freelancer. And now I'm super excited and we're gonna check it out and I'm going to let you know throughout what I think about it. The film is 11 minutes, 47 minutes long. Yeah, let's hop into it. Dust. Ooh, I like that, the way that logo came in. Nice shot, love. I mean, it's a bunch of rocks, but oh, it looks good. I don't know. Weekly status: mental health approaching critical levels. Oh shit! I Man's going through a mental breakdown. Mental health issue going on with this guy. I hear you. All right, so he's done 978 jobs that entail. Blood. Oh God. Oh, what the hell happened here? All right. So it's a car. Maybe the woman was walking and she got hit by the car. Okay, the guy is sitting up, devastated. So that girl's dead. The only thing that sucks about this is the fact that they don't have closed captioning because there are moments where I just have no idea what they're saying. But from what I'm getting thus far, he's like this guy that goes around helping out kind of like the EMT doctor kind of person and the person on the earphones. I mean, I've seen this film already prior to watching it because again, I didn't know what was happening because I couldn't hear most of the stuff that they were saying. He's like the EMT person that goes to different emergencies. And I guess in this situation, because I don't fully understand, but I see a guy, there's a car parked and there's a woman laying down. So one could assume the guy was probably driving and hit this woman. And then this guy tried to come to save him, save the girl and he couldn't save her. So yeah, that's kind of what I'm getting from it, which is, a, you know, pretty cool. This is in the near future, maybe. There's not, I guess, any hospitals, I guess. So people have these like mobile EMT doctor-like people coming to save the day. I follow. Ooh, raggedy. Truck is disgusting. 
Yo, if there's one thing I can say about this, they do a lot of good exterior shots. Like, visually, it looks really good. Very simple when it comes to uh, a short film. Like, you can make a film so much more amazing when you do, like, exterior shots. Overheads, you know, views of buildings and cities. It, it really could do a lot for your film by doing that. Just saying. Chelsea? Oh, God. Mm. See that? That's not necessarily like what was in the script. That's what happens when you are shooting, videoing, and you put it on the screen. That will happen if they had a laptop. Weird thing that appears on the screen on different monitors happens when you put videos on it. I don't know why it does that, but I can see that's definitely not a part of the film. Yet, so. Chase or James? I just started a double myself. I like how they add in the different sort of like sci-fi elements without doing it overwhelmingly. Like you know, like this is somewhere in the near future or in a, like some sort of dystopian universe. They don't focus too much on the eye thing. Like I think that's the first time I've seen him do the eye thing. But I've always seen the ear, but I never knew how it kind of worked. I think it's cool. Man, I, I don't know. Maybe he's homeless. We don't have a doorman anymore. Not to touch the Keep your hands on Dang, she got fucked up. So she's in her apartment. She doesn't have, they don't have security in this building. So, you know, she's probably in the ghettos. Some guy comes and attacks her because no one's guarding the door to the complex. Sucky. That sucks. I'm afraid she's infected. Infected with what? Or, no, I said, I said no needles. It's, it's on my profile. What profile? Oh, so if she doesn't get this needle, she's gonna die. So her saying that she said that she didn't want it doesn't matter. She was living in this place with a guy after they broke up. She decided to stay in the place. And I'm guessing from how it's showing us, like they have the thing in the ear. He has these different tools on him that I guess relay a message back to the people that he's in communication with that tell him what needs to be done. I don't know, I'm feeling it. I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying the story thus far. It's as if she got a dog or a cat or something. Yeah, he's, she's living alone and her parents are like, yeah, you should probably get a big dog, you know, for protection. Babylon? I used to go there a lot. Oh, a little, yeah. little connection. Diamond. You'll be good. Yikes. You'll be good pancreas. What? But don't worry, we can put one off into that one. No, no, I just, I just was attacked by someone. Yeah, look. He just said we can print one off in an hour. This is why closed captioning would be perfect here, because I, if it sounds like he said, because look, I'm trying to do closed captioning, and it's not coming up it's not needed for people to speak loudly because it's not that kind of environment the volume of their voice works for the story but it sucks because i can't hear what they're really saying but it sounds like he said we can print you a new one in an hour which is fascinating do we have an option oh, assuming that your credit is good oh shit so they're working on a credit system okay Okay, for those that did not hear what just happened. So, in replacing this woman's pancreas, they have discovered that she's actually pregnant. If they don't do the surgery, she's going to die. But if she does the surgery, the baby will die. But there's an 85% chance that she will survive the surgery, the replacement of the pancreas. And to their knowledge, she is not aware that she is pregnant. So now it's a morality thing. You kind of want to tell the woman that she's pregnant? But yeah, at the same time, she decides to keep the baby. She, there's a likelihood that she's not going to live, so both of them will die. Ooh. I think this is the part where I actually stopped because I was like, oh, I definitely need to react to this on my channel because that is a dilemma. Ooh, what you thinking, Chase? Chase. What is it? What's going on? Oh, this sucks. Just doing this today, that's a lot. Yeah, I think it's time to go. 
yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I mean, we have we have the largest database of possible outcomes to ensure a successful result. Poor thing. He's dealing with a dilemma. He don't know how to handle the situation. I respect it. Oh, this is intense. Fuck. Why do you look like that? What is something wrong? Uh, I don't hear the doctor. You might it. We replace your pancreas if you might lose the child. No, no, but you said you said that I'm pregnant. I mean, listen, he's doing the moral good, like morally he's doing a good thing. He's letting her know. So she's aware, so she can decide on her own that this is important. But I want to understand what the ramifications are for him if she does not go along with it when he could have not told her. Because, you know, this is a dystopian world, so let's find out. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's, it's up to her, okay? So... Yes! Uh oh. Phone judge, you decide what happens to my baby. Stop! <laughs> oh God! <laughs> It is an easy thing. But like I said, I really want to understand what, what the punishment is for him. If she dies without getting this surgery, I would think in this kind of world, it would be like, oh, money saved. He's having a mental breakdown. Chase. Uh-oh. Under the employee code of the Lancer Corporation, any persons in violation of Section 17 may not give consent will be immediately suspended with privileges revoked. Wait, what? Wait, whoa, I'm so confused. Wait, I'm so confused. What the fuck just happened? Oh, no, we gotta go back. Okay, he's giving her a choice. All right, cool. Chelsea, that's her. Under the employee code of the Lancer Corporation, any persons in violation of section 17 may not give consent will be immediately suspended with privileges revoked. Wait a minute. So because he gave her a choice, Was she really injured? Subscribe to Dust for new sci-fi every week. Oh, I'm definitely going to subscribe. Are you kidding me? I'm not going to lie. I'm at a loss. I'm trying to understand. Okay, was she actually stabbed? Was she really attacked? Did he really get penalized for giving her an option instead of just going through with the surgery? I am so confused, and I hope this is not a thing that's going on consistently with this channel, but please, please put on the captions, the closed captions. I need to be able to understand what you guys are saying. I'm not going to lie. From what I'm able to get from the story, I like it. I think that him having the mental complex doing the surgery and saving this girl's life or you know and not telling her that she's pregnant in comparison to giving her a choice and deciding then all of a sudden flipping it and all of a sudden him not just following through he ends up getting in trouble and i guess she somehow was working for them or taking a survey as a loyal customer i don't really know but i liked it all the same let me know in the comments below if you guys understood everything that they were saying and what was Chelsea's role? Was she a part of the job, a part of that company that had hired him? And was he getting penalized for giving her an option? So this is a little bit of complex that I caught after the film. So let me just explain it now. So we're showing some scenes outside, some rocks and some water. I don't really fully understand how it all connects. But then at the end, Chelsea ends up betraying uh, the character of Chase or James, whatever his name is, with a picture that looks like something that we had seen from the beginning, but it really isn't. Also, it shows that she kind of is not injured, so I'm trying to understand, is she a robot? Which also plays into another idea that I had, is James or Chase a robot? There are moments where he actually moves like a robot, he has the thing going on with his eyes that gives you the indicator that he definitely could be robotic, but then this situation happens. Stop! 
Oh my God, my dude short circuited. Also, as a side note, I pulled up my DSLR just to see if that squiggly line thing on monitors actually was true, like I said earlier, and it isn't. When I did it with my DSLR, the screen came out perfectly clear. So just ignore what I said. They most likely put that in purposefully for the film. I don't know, and I think the idea of not knowing either is what's awesome about this story. So I will definitely be back to react to more films. <laughs> Let me know in the comments below. I'll be very intrigued to read what you guys think. I am so happy that I saw this. And because of that, I am going to watch more of their films because I think people need to understand when you give money to big Hollywood, you are encouraging the bad behavior that you are getting. You're shelling out money for mediocre films and projects when you could be spending your time watching independent shorts that are just way more complex and actually pretty good. Also, like I said, November the 14th to the 21st, I will be going through every episode of Guillermo del Toro's Cabinets of Curiosity. It's gonna be fun, so don't forget to go to the link in the description bar below, become a patron, and let's have fun together. But with that being said, guys, if you guys like what you see, you know what to do. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell so you're always notified about the new videos that I have coming out. And I'll see you all in the next video.